amazing, except here there's a, uh, but other than that, this area is fitted, <laughs> this area is fitted, and all that. The, the only thing I have done change is, uh, uh, normally we have uh, uh, ancestral sovereign, we have a case of Ling, mm -hmm. uh, who is on a horse. Mm -hmm. So my logic is, uh, you don't need uh, two people on a horse. And uh, if he appears, Kesav Ling appears here with the seven great uh, entourage, and uh, over there I didn't want to put him in a horse. Uh, there's a uh, Kesav Doje Seja is a uh, uh, nun on a horse and a kind of sitting sitting Kesav. So it's that fitted very nicely. And uh, then we have uh, Tak Sing Chung Duk, as, so four dignities. Uh, kind of fit it very nicely, and uh, then we have uh, this particular throne is uh, elevated by two lions and uh, two tigers, and uh, that's about it. And uh, then uh, and a landscape has the ocean, lots of water, and. Uh, So that's basically uh, what it is. But it took uh, many years to figure it out, and I try not to make it uh, like a rubber stamp. Uh, but I did not add anything, and as more I sort of looked and looked and looked, it's kind of everything fitted so lovely and so beautifully. And uh, so in the middle, of course, we had the paramodal ridden and the sakyong. And uh, Shiva Oka. And these are just sort of uh, uh, Dakas and Dakinis sort of, you know, celebrating the lineage and uh, tossing fragrant flowers from the heaven. And uh, in general, when you talk about lineage, it's not a really flat like this. It's it's uh, sort of like a uh, center is in a tree that has a center and then there is a uh, four branches kind of thing. And out of the four branches, the branch behind is supposed to be the text, spiritual text. And since you can't paint something behind, so you put it higher up and that's supposed to be behind and oh. then and who's who's this uh, the female figure huh? next? Time? Oh, that female is uh, that's his condo. Uh, uh, it's uh, that is new, and the like I don't know what you wanted uh, that, and uh, I didn't come through the other taxes, but uh, is that the mother? The, is that the mother of the first Rigdon? This mother of Rigdon? No, no, no. no, no. Well, the Rigdon. When we talk about Rigdon, it's kind of interesting and. Uh, uh, Rick could be a uh, Rigpa is like a uh, intelligent, and also also Rick, Rigpa is also wisdom mind. So anybody who has a, that kind of you know more or less enlightened or it's, it's a Rigden. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we all could be a Rigden <laughs> someday. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't the original, right? This is a print. Which one? This is a print. Like it's not the original. Yeah. No, this is not the original. How original, how original was a lot bigger, a lot bigger, bigger. and uh, it took me a long time because of the size, because I want to put a detail in it. And if you put a small, you can't put detail. If you put a large, you can can't put detail. Then because of a large, I'm so short. I can't reach up there, <laughs> and uh, I have to implement uh, ways to paint, and then all there's all the constant fear that uh, accident could occur, and uh, someone could uh, drop paints and uh, smear all the way down, and it's just... 
<laughs> fearful painting. <laughs> but the uh, end result is I'm, I'm actually quite pleased and uh, not because I did it, but as far as I think uh, there's a blessing of the lineage is there. And uh, a lot of times uh, we kind of do this uh, round, round the trees and then, you know, you do some leaves, not in detail, and then uh, whatever is sort of you know left over from the leaves or whatever they kind of painted with the background colors and uh, none of that is done each leaves are done separately each fruit is done separately and uh, because i had to be careful and uh, there is no other references to look at and uh, like when i I talked to Peno Rinpoche, I said, Rinpoche, there is no references to look at, he said, he's just sat there for, for quite a while, he said, there is too, there is no reference, but he said, it has to begin somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have a question. What for you makes a painting successful? What makes a successful painting? I don't know, I mean, what do you mean by success? If you're happy with it. Well, uh, happy, I cannot say, but uh, I'm satisfied. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy because there's no accident happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes? I think you've answered the main question I, I would really like to ask, but it's a more mundane question. Yeah, um, maybe better. These so what paintings are so people? precious. Uh, how are they protected, or do you use certain kind of paint that won't fade, or uh, has the paint, well, no doubt the paint has changed over the decades, but you see what I mean, we don't want to see these, I mean, we wouldn't want to lose that. <laughs> well, uh, to tell you the truth, I think uh, a lot of things are, uh, nobody wanted, everybody wants to protect it to a certain extent. But also, it's, uh, there's a yes and no kind of thing. It's, uh, when we study, you, we always talk about impermanence. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, that should not apply on just sort of a you know, mental thing, but also mm -hmm. things that happen right there. Uh, for example, if you have a very precious vase, and you drop it and it smash into pieces, it's a sad, but that, that happens. And uh, it happened last week. <laughs> not a nice way, but it does teach you. It does explain something. And uh, in Tibet, in the, your, the same mandala, have you seen? And that thing is, a lot of people say, they spend so much time and energy to making this, and why do they destroy it? And that's the sort of reality of impermanence. It's, uh, it's a created, but it's a really... Yes. Not to make a big deal of it, and they're trying to save it, but you know, uh, yeah. some things you can save, some things you can't. But sometimes I mainly sort of aid to visualization, and uh, tangas are sort of reflecting the lineage and the teachers. Uh, yeah. But then, uh, I don't know, uh, my. Uh, so the lineage of uh, Buddha Dharma in uh, my parents' uh, hometown is uh, Dupakaju. I don't know how many of you know about Dupakaju. But uh, I've been exposed to a lot of Nyingma Lamas. So therefore it kind of makes me more inspired and devoted to Nyingma school too. And. Uh, then my particular style of painting is a uh, style called the New Memory. Uh, but uh, I have a lot of admiration to Kamagari style of painting, even though I'm not trained in that particular school. But uh, one of my brothers was kind of art expert, and I said, uh, what do you think of my painting or something, some question. He looked at it for a while and he looked a lot of it. He said, you can't call yourself as a new memories. I said, why not? He said, 
you are union of Kamagari and uh, New Mandri. And that made me made a perfect sense to me because I, even though I'm not a trained in that Kamagari school, but I admire a lot of things in Kamagari school. So, so those things that I admire unconsciously, involuntarily, is includes in it, mm -hmm. and therefore it shows in my painting. Mm -hmm. So, does that give well, you? Use the word visualization. I think that's. That's the key to me, is that we can visualize our teacher, mm -hmm. and that's meaningful. Well, on the Tonkas, we can visualize, I mean, that's, that's us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, visualization, we are supposed to do visualize the whole thing, but at the same time, uh, don't make it uh, look like a person itself. Yeah. Uh, because then it's getting too attached to that. The principle of that, idea of that, and uh, the quality of that, rather than a physical uh, shape and look. Do you do other kind of paintings besides Tonka paintings, like just for your own enjoyment? Or do you do paintings other than Tonka style paintings? Well, my uh, Tonka painting stage is more or less stopped after this. <laughs> <laughs> because of the physical ability. Mm. And uh, my eyes can't see it, but can't judge the depth mm. of my brush. Mm. And sometimes I would draw a line and it, I was drawing in the air. <laughs> oh, that's too far. I have to go for a little bit and then make a big blot over there. Mm. So uh, I think there is a uh, Limited, physical limitation has uh, stopped. And also, there was uh, put a lot of long hours to this because uh, <laughs> wanted to get it done and wanted to get it. I don't know, people talk about uncertainty. I, f I sense a great sense of uncertainty for my own life. And uh, will I complete this? Or will I? died before I complete this. Not that I have any kind of uh, chronic disease or anything. Those kind of uh, mental fears does come. So I put a long hours. And uh, when I completed this, and uh, it's kind of completed my vision as well. <laughs> did, did somebody ever say you should just get new glasses? <laughs> did somebody ever say you should just get new glasses? I do. <laughs> Not only glasses. People ask me, what are you doing? I wear three lenses. <laughs> I wear my glass, regular sort of, you know, reading, reading glass. And then on top of that, I wear one of those watchmaker's glass type of thing. Mm. And he has a few too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm only wearing two two pairs of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Nuda. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.